Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. I'm the Vice President of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. On this channel, me and my trusty hound lab gunner like to walk out into the forest to discover what kind of mushrooms are growing alongside the trail and help describe them for you and identify them and let you know if you could eat them or not or maybe if they're poisonous. So if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit subscribe and come with us in the forest of February 2024 to discover what kind of wild mushrooms are growing in Mushroom Wonderland. Mushroom Wonderland. Here's some mushrooms that are growing out of the moss right here. They're kind of tucked in here. And they're kind of dirty looking. A little bit, um, I don't know, you might call that like cloudy or just dirty looking caps. Kind of all smushed underneath this branch right here. But let me get this out of the way. Oh, we can see there's quite a group of them. Look at that. So this one's kind of interesting. This is a Clytosabe uh, sclerotoidea. There we go. This is a parasitic Clytosabe that is always growing on um, Helvella uh, genus mushroom. So it's a it's a basidiomycete. This this is a basidiomycete mushroom with gills and just like a regular gilled mushroom, but it's actually parasitizing an ascomycete, which it's usually the other way around. But Clytosabe sclerotoidea. Um, you know, when, when they've studied at the base of these to see genetically what, what's going on, there's cells of both the Helvella and the Clytosabe. So it shows parasitism and it needs the metabolites from the Helvella to, to fruit and come to maturity. So basically there's an old Helvella down in there and all of these parasitic Clytosabe are um, growing off of it. Lately, there's been a lot of rearrangements in the genus Clytosabe. A lot of them have been moved to Calibia. So I don't know about these ones. As far as I know, they're still Clytosabe sclerotoidea. Um, probably inedible. Some of these Clytosabes contain muscarin, which can be quite poisonous and uh, make you drool and sweat and stuff. Like pretty, pretty gross, pretty bad toxins. So, anyways. Clytosabe sclerotoidea parasitizing a Helvella that might not have ever even came to maturity. Like, we, we probably never would have seen that Helvella under there. But anyways, it's a cool one. Check that out. This is known as the alpine jelly cone. I see them on sticks all over here. All these little sticks that are about between a dime and a quarter in size, maybe a nickel size. This is Guipiniopsis alpina or the alpine jelly cone. A small, delicate, edible little orange jelly fungi that grows on conifer branches around here. I don't usually see it growing off of anything besides sticks that's about this size. And look, it's got a little stem and a little cap. They're so adorable. And you can just pick them and eat them like this, although they're so small, it would take a lot to equal some kind of a meal or something, but it's sort of a novelty. But really prolific winter fruiter. I'm all over the place. This is an old beaver pond. Mallard down here.
right down here I see some really cool mushrooms and these are one of my favorites to photograph and just to look at and think about the complexities of these little mushrooms look at this these are woolly bird nest fungi and do you see why they're called a bird nest look at that I mean it's literally got little egg-like structures in there those are called peridials and so when a drip of rain falls down it splashes in that cup and it ejects these little peridials out and these are actually the spore producing um, part of this mushroom so they're a basidiomycete just like a gilled mushroom but they've just adapted this this kind of a uh, way to survive some of them even have like little umbilical cords that kind of connect them to the cup look at all those little egglets and they're kind of in there with a little mucus isn't that bizarre let's see all right so now we have some peridials on my finger look at that these guys are kind of tan colored and uh, these produce you know hundreds of thousands of spores each so really wild and they're gonna splash all over here they like growing on dead sticks so the nidula um, nivio tomentosa so nivio meaning white tomentos meaning fuzzy or woolly and so yeah you can see that fuzz um, there on the bird nest itself there we go if I could settle down a little bit but anyways these can grow in big troops inedible they're just tiny they're really magical and mystical and a good photo subject so there you go your woolly bird nest fungi really common in the winter time in the PNW All right here we come across this mushroom growing on this old stick uh, it's like a dead little branch and there's these mushrooms quite delicate but growing in a big structure here and when i flip one over they have these really cool gills look at that this one's known as marasmielis canditis or the fairy parachute just delicate little white mushrooms that like growing on dead wood like this and inedible they're just too small to be of any culinary value but they sure are pretty and they grow in huge numbers so these are a white rot decayer and they're eating the the uh, lignin out of the inside of this wood they're helping to break down the forest and uh, sometimes they get this cobwebby kind of mycelium that overtakes its own fruiting bodies but you'll often see these in the winter very you know winter hardy type of mushroom and but delicate at the same time so kind of interesting this one the fairy parachute or Marasmielis canditis. This is very cool. I came across all of these little hazelnut shells laying everywhere right here on the side of the trail. And then I see there's this nice little hole here. Another one there. This is pretty fresh. So I don't know. Is this a sign of spring? Maybe this squirrel or this mouse or rat or whatever is in there has uh, been dipping into its little winter stash of hazelnuts. These all got ready last autumn. Here's a hazelnut tree, but all the leaves are off of it. These are good association for uh, for uh, candy caps. Yeah, so maybe I came across a little uh, Chipper Dale. Woke up in that little hole, and he's been eating eating these nuts and throwing out their shells. I just thought that was pretty pretty cool. Oh yeah, there's uh, discarded dug fir cones. So we've got a hungry little squirrel on our hands right here. It'd be fun to like set up a camera and just watch him. I'm sure that he's flinging these shells out of the hole. It'd probably be pretty funny to see. Came out of this forest, uh, this soccer field. And sometimes there's interesting little mushrooms growing in the grass. Let's go see if we can find one. All right, we got these LBMs here. We got a, pa a patch of two of them right here and one right here. The larger one over there but uh, as I pick this out and have a look at the gills I can see kind of a pinkish tinge to those gills but I'm pretty trained so I know what to look for these are serrated gills kind of tannish brown color but these ones are known as a, a type of entoloma actually in the subgenus uh, Nolania so this one Nolania 
Edulis variety concentrica. And, you know, they're called Edulis. Usually that implies that it's an edible mushroom, but, um, you know, Entoloma, not really known to be a genus of good edible mushrooms, but, uh, you know, maybe old literature says something different. I haven't studied it too much, but these are pretty common cold weather um, lawn mushrooms that are growing right now. They've got kind of this metallic sheen on top, really dark brown, and kind of a tannish brown colored gills, brown stem. And if you were to lay this on a white piece of paper or a black piece of paper, you would get a pink spore print. So here's a, a really common winter LBM, the Nolania edulis variety concentrica. Um, and again, that would imply some concentric rings, and you can kind of see that ring there around the margin. So, there you go. These are kind of unknown edibility, even though they're called edulis. So, I don't know. Maybe report back if you try them out. All right, buddy. Let's go back into the woods. <laughs> Let's go back into the forest. Oh, look. Here's a... A little stump here, looks like an alder stump with some LBMs, some little brown mushrooms growing on it. I'm gonna pick one of these, all very slimy on top. Look at that. Nice white gills, very dark stem. This one is wild enoki, flamulina, or flamulina filiformis. Um, this is kind of slimy, look at that, when it's wet. Quite viscid is what we call that. White gills, it's gonna have a white spore print. And then it has this dark stem, so they get called the velvet shank because of this dark fuzzy stipe. When they're this wet, they're not very fuzzy, but um, this is a good edible mushroom and it's a good one to cultivate. Man, this guy is just slippery. But here we are in February. There's quite a few right here. Not enough to make a meal of, but these are a good edible mushroom. And if I checked a bunch of the other stumps, around the edge of this field where they were cutting them, I could probably, you know, find a couple of nice handfuls of enoki mushroom. But you could take this and put it face down on like a piece of glass or a mirror and uh, get a spore print, put some of that on agar, and then uh, and grow your own. I've actually done that and have some beautiful uh, enoki in cultivation. And it's probably, f uh, you know, Flamulina filiformis. Um, some of the market enoki mushrooms from this area were sequenced and came out to be flamulina filiformis the one that grows here in the pacific northwest so flamulina volutipes was what was always thought to be enoki but it seems likely that this species is actually the real enoki but anyways that's a good winter mushroom and uh, always happy to see that growing on hardwood look at that a little bit of sun is coming out they say when you can see your shadow that it's time to plant peas. So, might be time to get out into the garden, but um, it's welcome. We've had several days of just heavy, saturating rain. Not the good kind of rain that you're like excited at the end of summer to see rain. This is like the depressing darkness of winter rain in the Pacific Northwest. So, we have pretty dry summers here really dry summers actually you know east of the rockies y'all get a bunch of uh humid stormy weather you know thunderstorms at night and stuff here we go like two months with like one little sprinkling of rain and everything is crunchy dry so at the end of summertime we're always excited to see the rain return especially the mushroom hunters but uh you know by now toward the end of february the rain is starting to become annoying and uh and persistent so today is a nice break before the next system moves in it really has been mild though hasn't froze hard in quite a while i guess it's been a couple weeks we had some snow actually like a week ago but it was like weird fluke snow that was just um it was like 36 degrees and snowing so it didn't really count i don't think as far as the mushrooms are concerned, it didn't freeze the ground, but. Lousy ski year. And uh, I was thinking because it's so mild, we would be seeing a lot of mushrooms out, but that doesn't even really seem to be the case. 
there comes a time of the year when a lot of the mushrooms have just expended their energy and are no longer producing fruit right now, but some mushrooms still are. So that's what we're here to maybe see and talk about. So right here we have another LBM that doesn't mind coming out in the winter time. Um, just after our heavy freeze, it's sort of warming up. And uh, these came popping up just in the last day or two. This guy, the honey pink gill. Can you see the pinkness in the gills? This one's another entoloma. Look at that twisted stipe with the striations on the stipe. Look at that. That's really cool. One thing uh, about this genus of mushrooms, they always have this little frost at the bottom of the stipe. And then it gets lighter as it goes up. But the twisted stalk, the pink gills, definitely an entoloma. And this one um, is pretty common around these parts. This one, Entoloma citratum. Um, Entoloma holoconoidium also um, occurs around here, but it's got a darker, more pointed umbanet cap, I believe. Uh, this one um, I've had sequenced and came back as Entoloma citratum. So this is one of the Entolomas that are probably, you know, inedible. You just consider this inedible. Um, just not much substance they don't grow in real big numbers so by the time you cook these up there'd be nothing nothing left in the pan and uh you know they come from a genus of mushrooms again uh and taloma that are just typically not really good to eat branch in the way but would you look at that beautiful so this one has Tremedes versicolor there you go turkey tail mushrooms grown in February beautiful this one's very like picturesque perfectly concentric rings creamy white porous surface underneath this is a great example of turkey tail mushrooms growing here on this hardwood log so they have different varying colors of concentric rings. These are the same species, but see this one's got darker, this one's got lighter rings. Once I heard somebody say, somebody well respected in the medicinal mushroom community say that the black ones have maybe more medicinal benefits, but like this one doesn't have any black, but they're coming from the same fruiting. So I don't know, I'm not trying to say that's not true, but you know, you could collect these and stew them up for like two hours on a low simmer. Add a little lemon peel and a little honey and make yourself some very medicinal or beneficial tea, as it were. So, great. Uh, turkey tail still growing, going strong. This is an interesting habitat I'm in. It's a, it's a mixed forest that was logged and replanted maybe 40 years ago. And there's pine and red cedar and Douglas fir and there's also alder here. So, you know, you can find these Tremedes versicolor. They don't really grow on the conifer but they like chunks of downed hardwood like this these old uh, alder and maple logs so anyways Tremedes versicolor beautiful turkey tail um, you could definitely be collecting those nice beneficial mushrooms Look at this beauty. Beautiful fleshy mushroom growing right here. This one's got a very beautiful ornamented stipe with all of that ornamentation, all those scales, nice ring. And then this cap is kind of this hazelnut color um, with striations. You can see these lines that run down like that are called striations. This one is going to be a dark spored mushroom in the Satharellaceae, so Satharella longestrata. Um, this one has these long striations, colorful cap. Let's let's get it all the way from the bottom. This is how you properly ID a mushroom. Oh, isn't it beautiful? 
It's a gorgeous mushroom and it's gonna have these dark, you know, black spores like uh, mushrooms in the Satheralaceae. And you can see these like kind of grooves in the stem. And that's another indicator of Satherella. You can see the mottled gills. That's where the dark spores are starting to come in. So it's also got this gorgeous, this gorgeous uh, annulus here, this ring. And this protected these gills while the spores were maturing. And now it's fully, uh, fully mature Satherella. So growing singularly, these are not really known for edibility. Um, probably uh, non-toxic, but just nobody really eats them because they're kind of rare, singular, beautiful. Satherella longestrata, beautiful example. I'm just going to kind of replant that one. It's still going to drop millions of spores either way. Um, so there we go. Like nothing ever happened. Satherella longestrata, beautiful winter mushroom. Whoa, look at this. Look at how big that bad boy is. Beautiful. These ones are more orange, you know. Maybe a different Tremedes, but look at that guy. That's beautiful. Wow. I have one like this on my shelf, and it has a decoration. Um, and, and it'll dry and stay the same color, you know. How pretty is that? There's a nice, nice fruiting of them on this stick. And uh, look right there. Here's just a, a big cluster, just a ton of spore fall right there. And it's even like encrusted white. So look at that. I mean, I'm holding just hundreds of thousands, millions of spores in that little bit. And I can just simply just toss that out over the forest and just scattered millions of spores all over my hands now i'm wiping them all over my pants they're gonna trail me around so mushrooms are great at reproduction because they make so many spores some of them are bound to land somewhere that they can grow but what a nice flush of tremides versicolor very pretty turkey tail mushrooms love it a couple small mushrooms growing trail side oh wow some even really tiny ones right there but when i pluck one of these we'll we'll take some observations it's striate you see all those lines going to the outside that's called striations they're really the gills underneath kind of make that shape this caramely kind of brown color we've got kind of an orange stem that are well attached to the to the gills and uh, kind of a orangish look, but uh, forking gills. This guy, Tuberia for facie, or the scurfy twiglet. I like that common name. They say that the stem is scurfy, but on some specimens, definitely don't don't show it that much. But these little orangish, benign mushrooms can often be found growing near like hallucinogenic mushrooms. Really common, and uh, I've seen them growing in the fall and in the spring. And obviously here in the winter, so Tuberia for facie, the scurfy twiglet. This boy is taking me back into all this clear cut, you know, slash area where they they did some thinning of the forest out here. And uh, look at that beautiful sterium here, sudum, false turkey tails, very beautiful, orange colored. And it's prolifically growing out here right now in the late winter. So these guys don't quite look like that Tremedes Versicolor. They do have sort of a ring type thing going on, but no white pores underneath. It just kind of looks just like the top on the bottom, you know. So a little darker on top, but it's smooth on the bottom. And uh, they're tough, inedible non-toxic these aren't going to hurt you if you picked them and made some tea out of them heck they might have some medicinal quality too but they're a great wood decayer so hey you guys so thanks for joining me and my dog gunner on that walk through the forest to discover what mushrooms are growing out here spring is on its way and we're going to have morels we're going to have some good agaricus mushrooms we're going to have oyster mushrooms there's quite a few good edibles that are coming out this spring 
as well as a lot of other interesting mushrooms. So make sure to stay tuned to Mushroom Wonderland, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Hop over to mushroom-wonderland.com to get some merch like a coffee mug or a hat or a hoodie. So until the next episode, much love everybody. Peace out.